it's really pretty hard to definitively determine how deep the injury is in the field. And there are a lot of different classifications for frostbite. But my habit in the mountains when I'm working in the field is simply to try to determine if it's deep frostbite or relatively superficial frostbite. Why does that matter? Well, it matters because with superficial frostbite, uh, you may have viable tissue, whereas with deep frostbite, you're probably going to lose tissue. So how can you prognosticate? What are some signs? Well, one thing you can do is if you look at a frostbitten hand, my hand's not frostbitten yet, uh, you can make some assumptions based on what you see. Number one is when the nail beds are dusky, cyanotic looking, that's bad. Mine are pink, that's good. When the patient has sensation, that's good. If they're anesthetic or hypoesthetic, that's not good. If their fingers are cold and you're now in a warm environment, that's not a good thing. Hopefully, they're going to warm up and stay warm. And if they form blebs, which they often do, which are big fluid-filled blisters, you hope that those fluid-filled blisters are filled with clear fluid as opposed to hemorrhagic fluid. And if they form blisters or blebs, you hope that they go all the way down to the distal extremity. If the bleb just goes part way down and spares the distal portion of the extremity, that usually, usually suggests really deep injury to the distal extremity.